We've got Mark Sanger here, well-known woodturner, um, recognised throughout the UK and indeed around the world. And he's here in our Axminster Tools and Machinery studio today to tell us a little bit about himself and to tell us more about his up-and-coming Turn It Up roadshow, which will feature himself on the woodturning talent. Mark, just a little bit of background, uh, if we may. Um, tell us a little bit about your earlier sort of working life and your uh, path to uh, woodturning. Yeah, well, thank you for inviting me, uh, first and foremost. And uh, first, I got in interested in working with long before um, my initial careers with my grandparents. I used to work in his workshop, make go-karts, all sorts of things, arrows, Dutch arrows, and that's where I first got interested in wood. And then my working life, I started um, on a four-year engineering apprenticeship at Western Helicopters in the aerospace industry, and I was working in the gears transmission um, section. Um, so that's where I started off um, my working life. And then in 93, I left there um, to join the Dorset Police, where I served 12 years. And um, <clears throat> after some time working in that, I decided I wanted to have a hobby um, to you know, give myself something to relax, play around with on my days off. So I started wood turning because it was a very accessible um, hobby. Um, you can start off with a reasonable uh, small amount of um, money to get yourself going. So I started wood turning. Then 2004, I decided to leave the police and to pursue wood turning as a vocation. Um, and that's how it all started. Mark, you're, you're, you must remember your, the very first piece that you made, the very first wood turning piece. Can you, can you recall that? I can, yeah, because it was so horrible. <coughs> it was a piece of 4x4 four four builder's pine. I just made a small bowl pot, I don't know what you can call it really. Um, and uh, that, that's where it started. And um, I don't have it now, but I've still got pictures of my original work, which I think is important to keep so that you can look back at your own progression. Um, just um, looking at your um, website, and I'm sure our viewers would be interested in this as well, we can see that you've certainly had some interesting influences um, to your work and on your work. How would you best describe that? What, what are the sort of things that have influenced your wood turning today? Um, originally when I started, I was very much influenced by the work of Dave Ellsworth and Cindy Draws to American Turners that turned hollow forms. Um, and I learnt early on that form is very important. I studied uh, various um, or several martial arts when I was uh, younger and um, I became interested in Eastern, Eastern philosophy and in particular the um, perfection of form um, that the Far Eastern cultures had within their own um, pottery and ceramics and the like and I started to, was started to become heavily influenced by that, but not only by the forms, but by the way they work. Um, in, so very much trying to get the perfect cut, the perfect shape on every piece I do. Uh, and that's what I've folded into my working practices. Mm. Every, every piece I make, I try to better um, the pre from the previous one. But yeah, if you could just tell us a little bit more, I see, I see that you use quite a lot of color in some of your pieces now, and that must be, must be a reason for that. Yes, I enjoy making both pure natural wood and the coloured work and, and I think it's just a progression that um, there's a great deal you can do with, color, uh, with pure work but the colouring gives me an extra string to my bow, an extra interest. Um, I always like learning, trying to get better with everything I do, I'm trying to learn new techniques, new ways of working and to almost replicate some of those um, philosophies and methods that so is used in Far Eastern culture to make vessels look yeah. aged and um, more, more uh, a creative path that I can investigate. Yeah. So, so, so which part of the making process do you enjoy the most now? Oh, that's a, quite a complex question. Um, <clears throat> I enjoy just the excitement of getting a piece of wood and turning it um, and working with it and as I'm working in developing it may be that it changes as I go along and that's the part that I really enjoy um, the, the, the fact that every piece of wood I cut into is totally different even if it comes from the same species of tree um, there's different grain patterns different ways of working and the other thing I enjoy about it is that wood will always teach me a lesson no matter how good I think I am in working with it it will always teach me that I'm, there's something else for me to learn 
So you don't always start with an end point or destination in sight. It's the journey, I think, is what yes. you're saying that is yeah. of interest to you. Yeah, I might start off thinking, well, I'm going to I'm going to make a hollow form, but it may be that um, as I'm making the hollow form, I might decide that actually I'm going to turn it into a lidded form, or it works quite well with a knot or a hole in it or an inclusion for me to perhaps scorch it and add texture and colour to make an aged vessel. Uh, and I try not to, or I think it's important not to um, restrict myself when I'm working to say, right, this is what I'm going to produce as the end product. Um, hence why I don't, I do very little production turning because I like that excitement of seeing where a piece is going to go and how it's going to end up. Yeah. And quite often it ends up greatly different than how I started off yeah. intending it to, end, you know, to be finished. Just um, more philosophically speaking, what, what's, what's the best piece of advice, Mark, that you think you've ever had in terms of your wood turning? I think the best piece of advice I was ever, ever given was by my grandfather um, in relation to life in general, but I use it in my work, which is just to put one foot in front of the other and just keep working hard. And just, so just, just and keep that and just, just, see, keep, yeah, just, just see where it goes, yes. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you've got to, the important thing is to take that that first step, I, it I is. suppose. Yeah. Yes. And you've done that. Yeah. Um, also, uh, well, what is your favourite tool when you're, when you're doing your project, when you tackle these projects? The favourite tool is a, a 3 8 or a half inch bowl gouge with a long grind, um, also known as a Celtic grind or an Ellsworth grind, uh, because it's very versatile and I can use it for many different cuts. Yeah. You've published a book. Um, which um, I've just had a chance to have a closer look at. And in there you talk about you know, the importance of sharpening the tools. I think you say um, frequently, um, I think it's a little? Frequently. Little and often. That's it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, keep the tools sharp, yeah. little and often. Um, the, one of the things when I was learning wood turning, um, and you don't necessarily, it's the excitement of getting the wood, putting it on the lathe and turning something. Yeah. And, and when you start off, you don't realise the um, importance of good tool sharpening and good tool geometry. Because with good sharp tools, good geometry, it makes wood turning much more pleasurable, much easier uh, and much safer. Um, so I always say to people, keep the tools sharp, sharpen them little and often. Um, so that you're always working with the best tool, the best cutting edge that you can. So, so, so what, what inspired you to write the book? I think you said there was, you saw an opportunity possibly and you saw that you could help, it, help address some of the gaps potentially. Yes, well I, I, I'm a self-taught turner um, and I've learnt my craft from other wood turners, other books and, um, and I wanted to uh, when I'm out walking with my dog, I, used, I would see uh, a piece of wood on the ground and I wanted to write a book where somebody can look at a piece of wood they found and decide, is it any good? If it is, then how do I process it to, to turn on the lathe? And once I've turned it on the lathe, how do I season it um, so that it doesn't crack? So I wanted to write a book that had the whole journey of, um, from the tree to the end item with various projects for people to try. And what, what, what woods do you prefer to work with? Mainly um, native um, woods, um, beech, sycamore, oak, ash are my main woods that I work with. Out of those, I would say that sycamore is probably a good percentage of the work, the wood that I use for my work because it takes colour and texture well. Um, it's also readily available because it's pretty much a weed. Um, because yeah. it grows so quickly, it grows quickly. Um, so it's readily available uh, and it's great to turn and it seasons very well. Well turning to our roadshow as we call it the uh, Turn It Up Roadshow with Mark Sanger which will be commencing very soon now uh, in Warrington and going to all eight of the Axminster tools and machinery stores. What can you tell our customers and our audience about what they could expect to see if they came along to a store on one of your show days? Well, I'm really excited about the, the tour um, because it gave me the chance to meet um, the, the Axminster customers and fellow wood turners and other makers. 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, turning um, wet wood, hollow forms, um, bowls and similar, but I'm going to be able to introduce and talk to people about the tooling, my methods and pass on the way that I work to them and hopefully inspire them to go away and try you know, some of what I do, but also to ask me questions. Um, you know, if they've got problems with uh, a certain piece of tooling, they can ask me and hopefully we can go through it and, um, you know, they can go away and be a better turner. Okay, so, uh, Mark, then, just finally, um, if you could be a piece of wood, what would you be? Um, I think I'd have to choose my favourite wood that I work with, which is sycamore. Um, it's um, flexible. Um, it's almost uh, underrated, um, but it, it, it can be used for so many different things. Yeah. If you can just talk about turning green wood and turning yeah. dry turning or whatever, I don't know what the expression yeah, but the, is. The, the, um, there's, there's two ways that I work. Uh, one is with unseasoned wood, wet wood, or green wood as it's called, and the other is with dry wood. Now, for the majority of my work, I use unseasoned wood, wet wood. Um, the reason for that is, is that it's readily available, um, it's vastly easier to turn than dry wood because the, the, the fibres are still um, pliable and can be cut uh, much more readily. There's a great reduction in dust, if any at all. And the majority of a vessel, whether it's a bowl or a hollow form or a box, is waste. So if we're using dry wood, then we're turning, uh, life's much more difficult because we're turning away all that waste which is already dry. So I'll use wet wood, cleaner, faster and easier, more readily available, much cheaper to buy. However, if I want to make a project that, um, that needs, I don't have the time for it to season, whereas the wet wood may take four to six months to season to be dry, if I want to make a project straight away for, say, a gift for somebody or, or a commission, then I can go to um, dry wood, which enables me to finish that piece within a couple of days or that day. Um, but the negative of using dry wood is generally it's only commercially available in, in a thickness of a maximum of four inches thick. So it, it restricts. So there's plus and minuses for both ways of working. Uh, Mark, you've, you've travelled extensively and demonstrated, obviously, um, in different countries around the world. Can you tell us a little bit about your world adventures in wood turning. Yes, it's something that I've, I feel very privileged in wood turning has uh, enabled me to achieve is that I get invited to countries such as Australia, Ireland, America, um, Spain recently, Germany um, and Italy um, to demonstrate. Um, there's one thing that I've found that's um, the same across the board is that no matter where I go to meet people, the wood turners are always friendly, they're always passionate about the craft. Um, there are different styles from, from different countries uh, and it's just great to meet people and to, to swap ideas because I'm always learning all the time, we're always learning. There's, there's, ne there's never a stage where we, we stop learning. So by meeting other people, even when I, I can't speak their, their own um, native language, we can still um, speak together through what we're, what we're making. And um, it's great to meet people and um, to travel to do that. I feel very privileged. Maybe you could just sum up by talking a little bit about the future of wood turning and getting younger people to try wood turning as well. Have you got any thoughts about that and where you'd like to see it go from here? I think wood turning, because it's uh, it, education today, there's very few schools that have lathes in there because times change it's very much um, if we're getting ready for jobs it's all technological based um, so wood turning from an education point of view is is pretty much non-existent however as a hobby um, it's very accessible for people and I think that where turning has been changing over the years much more um, involved in design and in sort of way out ideas now where people can see that wood turning can be used for many different creative um, aspects from a sort of sculptural turn into the colour that, that younger people now are starting to become much more interested in it um, and hopefully that can be developed to to keep the craft of wood turning going because if if, if pe young, young people aren't introduced to the craft of wood turning eventually it would it would die out like many of the, the traditional crafts but the, the technology of machines today um, it's almost becoming um, trendy 
a trendy sort of, of hobby to take up, you know, because there's so much tools and, and things that people can, in different styles, that, that they can get involved with. And also they need some, uh, um, something that will allow them to express their minds, their creativity, you know, the way that they can put their expressions into work. Um, and having the more creative work now, which run, I feel run, should run alongside most definitely the pure and the, the, the traditional work, um, but having the more creative work, the more sculptural work that people are now doing, particularly in other countries, in that you can view very easily with social media, gets young people to realise that actually there's a lot to wood turning that they can investigate.